Okay, here's the answer to chess webinar part two. So we're looking at the answer process in its deeper forms, but not too deep. It's um, it's not like a, a heavy situation that we need to get into. Um, we're looking at understanding the concepts that surround the answer process. And within this set, we're just going to look at the basic, simple things of checks, captures, threats, supporting, blocking, and position. So in those sort of areas, we want to focus on developing our pieces uh, going forward in a nice, steady, easy way so that we can understand why we're doing moves and what are the benefits from looking at that those types of candidate type situations because they all fall into place in any chess game whatsoever okay so what we're doing with this particular pawn as we know um looking to manage these areas here for now making space for bishops to come out either way you know and uh, make space for the knight to come out to get castled so in essence it's a valuable move in terms of gaining a good position on the board. So the key thing for the answer process goes along the lines of check the position, check for any checks against the king or the king area or any key pieces, captures, get the threats in there, support, blocking, works along those lines. So we've gone for position first because we can't get any checks on anything because it's the initial moves that we're making. And then we're now looking to threaten this pawn, but at the same token, as we know, we're developing the knight so that we can go and castle them on the king side as well. So it's not to forget everything else around why you're doing that particular move. Look at your candidates and say, yes, okay, this is why I'm doing this as part of the positions, checks, captures, threats, support in blocking position type situation. Does it improve my position? It is threatening, is also improving my position because I'm able to at some stage go on castle kingside. As we mentioned previously, the movements of the opponent are potential questions and we've got to have potential answers. So we've got to keep that in our mental Rolodex as well going forward. So it's not a one-stop shop thing. All of these things work together in unison. Okay. So the opponents asked the question, not really. What he's done is he's defended. So we've asked the question of the pawn. So he's brought his knight out defending the pawn. So we win that momentary tempo. So now we're asking the question of this pawn. But also what we're doing is we're threatening yeah so we're doing a threat it's a nice candidate position for us to actually threaten this pawn so they capture so in our sense we're capturing because we're improving our position so the opponent now is asking the question well we've got a two on one on your knight so what are you actually going to do and i've got my i've got my queen out looking to maybe tantalize here if I do get my dark square bishop out on the diagonal towards here. So that's like a future question. So to negate all of those confusions, may as well just take that knight off the board. It's nice, simple capture. Third on the list, position, checks, captures. So it works, fi works fair for me. So with the queen capturing this um, knight, he's asking the question about this pawn here. So he's actually attacking our pawn. So we're now supporting this pawn with our knight, with our solution to their question. So at this stage, now the pawn has moved down, but behind the queen is the king. So there's nothing else that can actually defend if we bring our bishop here which would be a major threat and a solid position for the bishop coming to here because then we're going to get a major piece off of the board. So we do actually attack the queen because it's a major threat, part of the candidates, and then the opponent resigned at that point. So that was a fairly quick game just to highlight the 
position checks captures threats supporting blocking situation but un understanding that underneath that we're basically responding to the questions that the opponent is asking and then we're asking the opponent questions as part of our solution to their question so we'll go on to the next game just to um, go through the candidate positions with the answer process Okay, so we're back with the next game. So our focal point is on using the candidate process underneath the answer. Um, so always answer, asking questions and always providing a solution, potentially with an answer and underlying, having a look at the basic structure of the candidate maneuvers, which are, is the position okay? Uh, do we have any checks on their king or their king area? or on major pieces or squares and just working down the list as part of trying to get a potential value movement or the viability of that move to get a really good understanding as to why you're actually doing that move in the first place. So as usual pushing through so getting a nice position with the palm, developing the knight so basically it's developing this knight basically to say, right, we're going to get, give space for our king to get castle. But at the same token, it is also managing this square here. So it's supporting the potential attack towards this area. So it's part of the candidate type situation. It's not attacking anything, but it is attacking a space. It's like managing a space around the center. They bring their knight through. Their knight is not attacking anywhere, but it is managing the squares around the center. So we push through first. So basically going for the threat first, part of the candidate process to try and improve our position on the board. So they capture and we capture back. Okay, so the questions were answered and the, answered, the answers were forming good positions on the board. So we grab the knight, so keeping it nice and simple, getting the captures in there, it's third on the list, so it does take priority in our eyes, so long as it does improve our position, not just capturing just to capture, um, got to have a look at what is the sort of follow on from that position. So they capture back. Now we're bringing our bishop through, so basically it's improving the position of the bishop, but it's also got a nice threat towards the weak pawn that is um, next to the king. So twofold effect there, and it's asking the question, what are you actually going to do about that? It's nothing major at the moment, but it can form a bit of an upset if we do get this queen in here, if they negate the fact that this bishop is out. So the knight comes, so basically the knight is blocking any queen potential coming here, but it is also asking the question about this pawn. So what's our next candidate move? Potentially looking to support the pawn. Now behind, as we said, the queen does have this potential with the bishop supported by the queen attacking this weak pawn here. So in essence, it's a twofold kind of attack, maybe even a triple, because potentially looking to come here to attack this pawn, but it's all future tense. But for now, it's supporting the pawn, part of the candidate situation. So at this stage now, it's asking the question of the bishop and the pawn, but it's easily dealt with because it's the head of the snake. We do have a supporting pawn, so we can capture third on the list, nice and steady, nice and easy to de uh, deliver that type of movement. So it's attacking the bishop, so we can actually now put a check on the king. It's usually checks first. For me, it's position first. If I can get the check in, but is my position going to be okay? You know, sometimes you can have like a weak check, which puts you not in a very favorable position. You have to be mindful of those types of situations. 
So they come through with the bishop. We gladly take the bishop off the board. That's pretty straightforward. And we castle for king safety. So it's asking the question of our queen. It's saying, is your queen really in a good position there? So we bring our queen back. And at this stage, I thought, hmm, they may have a they may have a little bit of a they might be right. You know, what does my queen have there now? Because it's no longer supported by the bishop or attacking the king area. So really what is our queen doing here so we need to improve the position of our queen to make it functional so now we bring the bishop through now it's obviously attacking the knight that's pretty straightforward so it's putting a threat onto a piece which is nice candidate maneuver and it's a fairly safe position also we don't want our king to feel home alone as we keep mentioning so we've brought the bishop over towards the uh, king side Bishop's now asking the question of our pawn here. And we bring the knight through rather than pushing up because then our knight would be delayed in getting developed into the game. If the bishop did take, like we say, we don't have any problems doubling the pawn because then it gives our rook reign to start owning the files. So we don't have an issue doubling the pawns. But they go and castle, king safety. Now we're challenging the pawn, as usual, trying to put pressure. We're saying, well, the question is, we've got one, two at the minute. If we get rid of this knight, then we, we can actually take this pawn off the board. We can start leveraging some more pressure towards that pawn if, we, if need be, and bringing the queen here once this knight disappears, potentially. So the bishop takes the knight off the board, it takes away that kind of threat from that uh, situation. And as we mentioned, we don't mind doubling the pawns because now we've got space to actually work with the rooks. Queen comes down, it's attacking, it's basically attacking the bishop, asking the question, what are you actually doing with your bishop? So we take the knight off the board, so it's a complete take fest. But I felt fairly comfortable that the position that we had on the board was working for us. So we could now grab the pawn because there's nothing supporting the pawn out of those exchanges. So the queen takes their pawn back. So the queen is working solely by itself. And I'm hoping in my heart, I'm thinking, maybe they're not going to get their rooks developed because they're still on the back. And we're almost halfway towards owning a file with both our rooks. So we grab the pawn, because the pawn has got no protection on. And now they put pressure onto our queen. So we can look to exchange off their queen. And they're not interested in that. So again, I feel they're losing a little bit of tempo in terms of escaping their queen to attack a pawn on the other side of the board. So we move the pawn up, protected by the queen, support. So he's doubling up to attack our pawn. So we can freely move the pawn up, supported by the queen. And at this stage now, it's looking for an exchange. Feeling fairly comfortable that once we take this queen, it's establishing a good framework for our, our rooks. Because his rook is going to be singularly down here, potentially looking to attack here. We can support these pawns with our rooks, and we're going to be in a more favourable position. Always looking at the back end for our king, making sure that potentially we get a flight square for it. So the rook comes down. So in my heart of hearts, I'm thinking there's potential for a back rank checkmate here because maybe they're going to overreg themselves. So we bring the rook up, across, sorry, and then bring the rook down, supporting the pawn, and then they take the rook, the pawn, sorry. And there's nothing else that can support the attack on the back here because the rook can go and get a back rank checkmate. So that's how that game ended up with hopefully focused candidate moves, focused answers and focused questions to the positions that were uh, given to us, questions that were asked of us and looking finally at the position on the board to really drive it home and gain an advantage. So we'll go on to the next game just to um, go through the candidate process 
So this will finish off the candidate process underneath the answer with the questions and the solutions. Okay, here's the next game in the answer process, including the concepts of the candidate moves, position, checks, captures, threats, support, blocking, position again, working with the answers and the solutions as we've mentioned previous. So we're playing as black here, and let's Knight comes through and basically attacking the pawn, well, threatening the pawn, but it's also really, at the end of the day, just advancing so that we can make space for castling because ordinarily people will defend the pawn. So they bring their pawn through, so we bring the bishop through, supporting the knight, but also making space for castling. Nice and simple, straightforward. No questions have been asked of us at this moment in time, so we, can, we castle quite safely. And again, no questions have been asked really uh, from that type of position. So we're not asking a particular question at this moment in time. We're interested in, as you know, probably attacking this bishop here because uh, we do like to get the rook open on this file as best possible. So we do attack the bishop, asking the question, do you want to take it or not? And they refuse, so we take, knight takes, all simple stuff. Yep. Nice captures, threats, nice position. So we bring the knight through now, looking to basically get activated, maybe either pushing this pawn, although we don't like that sort of position around the center here. Maybe looking to stop the knight, maybe bringing the knight across here. Lots of maybes, depending on what the opponent actually does. Initially, bringing the knight up helps to get our rooks linked eventually. So it's not a bad position at this moment in time. So first thing for us is position, then checks, then captures, then threats, supporting, blocking, then position. So fairly comfortable with this. So again, no questions asked of us at this moment. So is it our time to ask a question? Yep. So the question is asked, well, what are you actually doing with this knight? Small piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong most of the time. So the knight moves, so it's again really not asking a question of us with that particular move. So we need to be asking a question ourselves. Well, if they're not doing anything, can we start taking charge of this A file as best possible? So we're attacking key, a key space as we're moving forwards with the pawns. Okay, hold well on. We'll do it fast then. Okay, so again, no question asked of us in this particular situation. So the less questions that are being asked, I'm hoping that our questions are going to be too much for them to be able to answer all of them. So admittedly, on this particular move here, I even did say to myself, well, this isn't really asking a question. But then when I remembered, it is actually asking a question because it's asking Okay, are you going to allow me to jump in here? He's probably feeling confident that yes, I am. But he does kind of lose out if he does allow us to do that. So it's a little platform thing. A little bit like what we do when we're attacking the bishops. You know, coming here and then going there on the flanks. Similar type thing, but in the center. So it's asking the question, are you going to allow us to do that? 
and they responded well I don't really want you to do that so I'm basically going to put two pawns in the center here but I'm thinking because we've got this pawn here then maybe that takes that out of the way but I suppose he can replicate so he does replicate the pawn so in essence this particular movement might not be as good as we initially thought but it does open up a file for the rook so rooks like open files so why not take advantage of that so good position asking the question again this knight move was not really asking a question it was more saying well this is a statement i'm actually coming in i'm just going to take your bishop okay so it's not really a question it's a statement so it's an obvious move but we just want to push them and lead them towards finishing off their statement so they do capture and we capture back okay so nothing major so now they're asking a question of our fire pawn okay so what do we do, the, uh, do they want to take it or do they want me to defend that pawn so they do actually capture at this moment in time i'm believing that does kind of lose them a little bit of tempi so we bring the queen across now attacking the bishop looking for a better position and we're asking what the bishop is actually wanting to do at this stage their rooks are not linked so it's going to take them a little bit longer to um, link up their rooks so could we take advantage of that all the while the queen is babysitting this pawn and that's not really what the queens are de uh, designed for so we're actually asking questions as to really um are you sure you want your queen just solely supporting this pawn because we do have potential for the queen coming here and adding a little bit more pressure to this pawn so we do ask the question as to well are you going to leave that so they say well if i can't defend that pawn i'm attacking this knight that is unprotected so we've got to be mindful that our knight is unprotected so we grab the knight so his queen has come down and it's a single maneuver but you still have to be mindful and this pawn now doesn't have any protection on it whatsoever so the queen can actually freely take so we're basically saying okay the questions have been a little bit too much for the opponent we're unsettling them now we're asking the question of these two pawns here how does that pan out bearing in mind the queen does control this square so the rook is potentially coming to attack maybe so the rook does actually attack so we take one of the pawns off asking another question about this pawn here so long as our position is going to be okay so each time there's a question being asked there's a potential candidate move that can be done and at this moment in time there's a lot of captures that we've been allowed to take um advantage of and so improving our position on the board the bishop is blocking in its own rook so that they're down the tempi or two in terms of developing their pieces in order to gain any advantages key thing though for them is that they do have this pawn here so they're asking the question as to are you going to defend this pawn or um are you going to allow me to take trying to maybe make my rook a little bit better probably taking this pawn as well hmm that's the question they actually take so we can take our pawn, take a pawn pressure in their queen because at this moment in time we've given them a bit of damage our position can transpose into a better position a bit quicker than theirs at the moment based on the fact that their bishop is blocking their rook so that's basically the type of thing that we're looking at at the minute doesn't want to exchange sometimes as we mentioned in the mantra is it's probably advisable to take you know um sometimes you may lose that tempi by just moving the queen away so we bring the rook up because it's supported by our queen so we're trying to develop an attack towards the king area looking to maybe double the rooks here to establish better answers or questions rather to their situation and hopefully they can't provide any solutions so the queen moves out of the way so we can bring our knight down so basically looking to try and either work our way up to be a bit of a menace 
maybe give some space here to attack but not at this moment with the queen supporting doubly but either way i suppose it would be okay so a smaller piece attacks the higher piece i suppose that felt good but then we can move our queen across supporting the pawn so they've missed tempo in order to be able to take the pawn here because they sh they would have been okay taking that grabbing the pawn you know grabbing the pawn with the rook probably might have given them a little bit of a, a better situation so the rook comes back so now we're asking the question of the pawn because the pawn really and truly this rook can actually take and it's going to be facing a higher piece which is the queen and then we're going to potentially have some sort of doubling situation his king is going to be kind of home alone you can almost feel the pressure with the two rooks just coming facing and if the queen is still on the board it's going to be a dynamic attack towards the king area so the rook attacks the queen so we can put a check on the king attacking the queen as well so the queen takes and the knight develops getting high, higher up the board well we were looking at this juicy position here we were just like um, hoping that maybe they didn't see it but they moved the king but then that allowed us to bring the rook here and then they moved their rook attacking our pawn but now we're doubling the rooks against the king so the answers are being really quite devastating in terms of the questions that the opponent's asking because now the rook is not really getting into the game it's potentially coming to support here but it takes the rook pawn with the rook which is a little bit strange because there is pressure coming towards the king and as the eval bar says it's um mating one in that situation so definitely looking at clean clean questions clean positions straightforward down the line um maneuvers with the pieces and really understanding what the pieces can do and definitely working the pieces together as we've always said has been a key part of establishing the answer process utilizing the candidate moves the positions the checks the captures the threats the for um blocking the sub the supporting and the position play um they're all been key things in terms of trying to establish a better position for yourself on the board so th those were the key areas for part two of the answer process basically focused on the candidate process